Good morning, everyone. I'm just going to start. It's 10 o'clock, so I hope um, everybody is sitting well, and uh, yeah, we should be able to um, to do this. Uh, can everybody everybody hear me loud and clear? Also in the back. Yes. All right. So we're trying a different setup with uh, the lights. Uh, this m might look a little bit strange, uh, especially if you only look at my face, but uh, the slides are better off this way. So um, yeah, uh, I hope everybody can see that uh, those two. Uh, my name is uh, Matthias Nobak, and uh, this talk is about uh, package design, uh, more specifically the principles underlying package design, uh, where a package is just any kind of reusable piece of code that you would, would like to share with yourself, your company, um, your university, um, or the whole world. You may know me from my blog. It's about uh, PHP and Symfony. Symfony is a web framework, in case you didn't know this. Uh, it's a framework that I like particularly, so I uh, decided to, um, to dive into it, uh, learn as, lot as, I can, as much as I can about it, and uh, to write uh, articles about the, um, the framework itself and how you can uh, best use it. So um, after I was doing this for a couple of years, I wrote this book. It's called The Year with Symphony. Uh, it gives you some, some more uh, insight in the inner workings and some advanced way of using it. Uh, also, what's interesting for my own personal development is that um, the last chapter is about uh, moving away from the framework itself and trying to prepare your code for uh, reuse. And um, well, there are some, some suggestions for the ways that you can uh, prepare your code for such uh, reuse. Um, and so, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm moving uh, further and further away from the actual uh, framework-specific code, and I'm always trying to look for ways uh, in which more people than just the Symfony community would be, uh, um, would be happy to use the code that I write. Uh, so in a way, you could say that uh, for a long time I have been uh, tightly coupled myself to this particular framework, and now I'm, I'm, I'm looking around a bit. Um, and I'm also looking uh, from a bit, of a bit higher perspective at my own work, so um, uh, this is the way I, I uh, uh, envision it. <laughs> and it's just like um, uh, writing code all day, uh, uh, regrouping that code into uh, useful functions, and then again, uh, regrouping those functions in uh, classes. Um, and well, then sometimes uh, you may think that it, it may be useful to, to regroup those classes into even uh, bigger units or bigger components, uh, and those are called packages, of course. Uh, when I talk about packages, there are many different kinds of them. Uh, you can have private packages in for your own uh, use or reuse. Uh, you can have public packages. You can have open source packages. You can have uh, maybe closed source packages that you just uh, sell in some way or another. Um, there may be strict boundaries. So uh, a package may have a package definition file, but it also may just be a set of files in your project. Um, it may even be uh, just one particular namespace that you never uh, thought of as a package, but still can be considered to be a package. And uh, the following, uh, everything I, I'm going to tell you about uh, design principles uh, should be applicable to all kinds of packages, these private and public, open source, closed source packages, any of them. So whenever we're looking for uh, design principles, for classes there are a lot of them, and many are very familiar. Uh, so you, you may already know about uh, the solid principles, um, any other kind of design uh, uh, techniques like um, uh, encapsulation or polymorphism. Those, those should be very familiar, I think, uh, by this time. But uh, for package design, there, there seems not to be uh, any, anything like that. Um, uh, no such thing as package design principles, only class design principles. Uh, even though packages are becoming more and more important in our, in our everyday work, uh, I think many of you also uh, try to uh, try to use as many packages as possible that are uh, of high quality, but um, uh, in, a, in a way that you don't have to write all the code yourself. So <coughs> it is important to know what should be uh, considered to be a good package and um, which packages are trustworthy, can be relied on. Well, so uh, during this talk you will learn some things, um, some, some, some principles by which you can judge any existing package uh, on its quality. And the funny thing is that uh, I thought there would be no such thing as, as package design principles. Nobody would have written about this. I, I mean, I never heard about it before. Um, but I, I, I came on this website, uh, butunclebob.com. It's a website owned by Robert Martin. And um, uh, I mean, he's the one that coined the, uh, the solid principles term. Uh, but he also has uh, six uh, package design principles. Uh, I, I must say it's, it's not all original work by him, but it's, uh, he's just um, uh, expanded on existing work and recombine those things and put nice names on it. 
Uh, and so th this is very useful. I mean, many people uh, will be able to understand um, these principles, especially if you're somewhat used to uh, uh, object-oriented programming. Uh, when, I, when I stumbled upon them, I thought, well, th they are probably not that famous, so uh, maybe I just dive into this and um, uh, start to research a bit about it. Um, and then in the end, I thought, these, these principles are very, very useful, and I think every PHP developer, and in fact, every developer in the world, should know about them uh, I in case they want to release some code as uh, reusable code. So, um, yeah, I decided to write another book. It's called Principles of Package Design, and uh, this is the, 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 the particular uh, goal I had in mind is to tell everybody about um, the ways you have to uh, be thinking about and be writing your code uh, for packages specifically. So um, the question is always, how can I optimize the experience for the users of the package as well as for the maintainers? And uh, these seem contradictory most of the time, but uh, they really are not. So if you apply the following package design principles uh, correctly, then your package will be better usable, but it will be also be better maintainable. So that's, that's, that helps two kinds of people. Uh, looking at the package design principles, we can separate them into two groups. The main group, the first main group, is a set of three principles, and they are about cohesion. And I think cohesion is something that um, every one of you will already know about, uh, even though um, <coughs> you, you may not be able to explain the word properly uh, as of now. Uh, cohesion is also about um, uh, combining things together, belonging together. Um, and if you're looking at the code, you always have to, uh, to ask yourself, uh, does this piece of code belong right here? and shouldn't be it in some entirely different place. Um, in other words, it allows you to, uh, to, to label the, the, um, the cohesi cohesiveness or the sense of belonging together of one uh, group of classes, for instance. And so if you look at these images, you can see that, um, well, I, I, I think they, they, they should be able to represent packages in a way that uh, the red package, well, clearly misses something that is in fact uh, uh, available in the blue package. So, uh, well, there is a, a cohesion problem there it should move from the blue package to the red package. And as you can see, there are several uh, green packages right there. Um, they are so highly cohesive, uh, but they are still not very much together. So it might be just best to move all those things into one package. Um, the yellow one, yeah, it, 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 it has some cohesion problems as well. I don't even know, uh, uh, well, it, it, it tries to do so many things at the same time. So we might just want to, to create some nicer, smaller packages for that. Just some examples, some visual examples. Uh, then there is something uh, called coupling, also for packages, just as it is for uh, classes. And there you look at uh, how different packages need each other to, to do their work. So uh, you take a package, you draw a line from one package to another one, and you can judge those lines, those dependency uh, lines. So you can always say, um, this is not a correct dependency, um, it is unsafe to depend on that package, or maybe, like, like in this example, there is a circle between um, the dependencies. So uh, the green one depends on the orange one, and it depends on the green one again. So I I in a way, you have to remove those uh, dependency um, um, directions. So let's first take a look at the, um, at the first three principles. They are about cohesion. Uh, what's important to keep in mind is that if you're talking about cohesion for packages, you only have to look at one package at a time. So cohesion is about one package, not about its relation with other packages at all. Uh, so the question is, what's inside a package, and does it belong there? Uh, shouldn't it maybe be in another package, or uh, should we combine several packages into one to have better cohesive um, packages? Uh, the first principle is called the release reuse equivalence principle. Um, that's just a very, uh, very interesting name for um, the idea that uh, the granule of reuse is the granule of release. So you can, you can re reuse only as much code as you can properly release. And any code that you release is reusable. So there is there th this goes both uh, in both directions. Um, the thing uh, to, to keep in mind is that if, if you want to reuse some code, you have to properly, proper, properly release that code. Um, it's no use if you release code using, for instance, um, uh, sending an email to a, a teammate and um, you say, uh, well, this is a piece of code you can reuse. But then that, that is not, not a proper release. Uh, it's not entirely useful for the other person uh, because, well, any, any bug fixes that, 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 that you may have for them, uh, they, they don't get that automatically. So um, th there are so many things really you have to take care of when you're releasing code. And this principle sort of reminds you of that. Um, just, uh, just a quick list of uh, things you have to think of when you're uh, releasing code. And, uh, 
Well, the list is actually much longer, and um, I can talk about this for hours, I think. Uh, there are so many things you have to do whenever you're releasing code. Um, well, one thing you have to take care of is uh, proper version control of the code, so uh, no sending emails to each other. It's just, it has to be in a version control repository. Um, you have to provide the proper meta files, like a, a license file, um, a readme file, at least somehow explaining what the package is about, uh, it's, it's supposed to be, a, to, be to, to do. Um, you have to make sure that every file in the package is already available using some kind of auto-loading mechanism. Um, there should be almost no things um, that a user has to do before they can use your package. Um, you have to, of course, have a nice package definition. Uh, you have to set up the requirements for your package. Maybe your package needs other packages to work. Uh, you need to think about version uh, constraints, so you don't want to limit them too, too much, or, but you don't also don't want to um, make them too uh, free. Uh, so those kinds of things. And in particular, if you ever release code, you have to be very careful about um, backwards compatibility. This is something you all know of, I think. Um, whenever you upgrade something and then something goes wrong, I mean, uh, we, we can just talk about PHP itself. <laughs> These things happen all the time. And uh, well, as soon as you start releasing your own code, you, this, this is your task to, to, to make sure that um, nobody experiences such problems with your own code. And um, well, you can also say that, uh, well, but then you have to put a warning in your readme file that I, you're not going to maintain this in a way that maybe some people would want. Um, but I think, I think most of you, if you ever release code uh, to be reused by other people, uh, then, then you definitely want to provide backwards compatibility. And this, this alone can be a lot of work. Um, and so the conclusion is really, uh, if you don't have time for that, if you uh, cannot properly guarantee that you are going to um, turn your package in a real product, a nicely behaving product, um, then, well, maybe, uh, and this doesn't sound fr very friendly, uh, you may not, you, you, you maybe should not release that, that package. Uh, or just add a little note on top of the readme file saying, this is very nice, but it, it's experimental, and I, I'm, not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not going to take a lot of time to, um, to uh, maintain it. So, um, yeah, and at the same time, this, this doesn't mean uh, that I want to discourage you to uh, release packages. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a great experience, and it's really nice to see people um, use your code in other projects, um, but you have to take proper care of it. And there is, um, in this way, this is actu actually um, uh, about cohesion, since uh, it's very hard to maintain very large packages, so you may decide to uh, go for a small package with just one very particular feature. Um, well, just a suggestion. Then the, the second uh, cohesion principle is the common reuse principle. It says that classes that are used together are packaged together. And so, um, well, this, this sounds very good. I mean, if you want to use several classes and have to install several packages, that, that doesn't sound good. Uh, it's better if you have one package containing those classes that you want to reuse together. But at the same time, if you take a package and you look at one class um, and you look at another one and you don't use them together necessarily in your project, there's something wrong. So the idea here is that uh, if you use one package in your, pr in your project, you should be able to use every class of it, and you should also use every, every class of it. Uh, as soon as there are classes that, that, that make sense to be used separately from, uh, from each other, then it may be time to split up the package. So this, this is meant to uh, prevent you from putting everything that is reusable in one package. Uh, one way in which you can spot packages that violate this principle is by looking at the features they contain. Um, and there is a package smell, which is called feature strata. I invented the word myself, so I can explain you what it means. Um, strata, <laughs> just a parallel layers um, of code in this case. And looking at uh, the colors of the classes in that package, you can see that uh, the orange ones uh, together implement one particular feature. And there is uh, a set of green classes, they implement another feature, and finally a set of red classes, and they implement quite another feature. Um, each of those features can be used separately. Um, they have no interdependencies. So actually, it, it really doesn't make sense to have them all in one package. Uh, you, you can see this uh, in practice when someone needs to um, load this entire package in their project, but use only two or three classes from it, even though th itself, um, the package itself contains maybe 20 classes. So that's a package design smell. Um, one example is from uh, my actually favorite uh, project, Symfony Project, um, the Symfony Security Component. It contains features for um, uh, ACL, access control. Uh, so um, there are four features um, which are um, needed by all of the other features. There is CSRF for cross uh, request uh, forgery protection, um, HTTP uh, features to, uh, to support uh, logging using forms, for instance, 
um, and then some other uh, things. But basically, the, these components, ACL, CSRF, and HTTP, require a core, but they can be used entirely separately. So uh, it totally makes sense to have separate packages for them. Um, and so uh, the Symfony maintainers did this. They already split this package, uh, and it totally makes sense because um, it's not really about the, the amount of bytes that you have to have on your disk or the amount of code that you include in your project, um, even though that can be a danger too. It's more about um, keeping track of changes. So if you have a user for this uh, security com component, and um, well, of course, security is very important, so they have to keep track of all the changes that uh, occur within this, this package. And um, well, if, if there were no separate packages for all of these features, then people would have to upgrade the, the main package all the time because of uh, important feature, feature um, uh, fixes. Um, while most of those changes shouldn't be relevant to you at all since you only use one small part of it. Um, yeah, so, so it's, it's, it's important to, to really uh, split those packages into multiple ones. Uh, well, just, so, so just like the, the maintenance team already did for the Symfony security component. Um, then another uh, sign of, of packages va violating this principle is that, um, well, when one class in the package needs another dependency, then another class. So there can be other packages that are only needed by a very small part of uh, this one blue package. A great example would be, uh, I think many libraries are great examples of this, but uh, for instance, uh, a file system abstraction package that I know and, and have worked with, um <coughs> it's called GoFret. Um, it contains all kinds of adapters to work with uh, particular file system storages and to abstract the, the differences between them away so that you can just say, I want to store this file on uh, an unknown file system. And then the adapters uh, contain the, um, the, 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 the detailed implementations for that particular uh, file system. But the problem is, of course, that with so many adapters, most users will only pick one and use that in their system. For instance, they will store their files on Dropbox. I'm not sure if that's, that's a good idea. But uh, if you do, um, then you're probably not, not going to store files in another place at the same time. So uh, it's very likely that you will only use one of those 20, 30 classes of this package. Um, well, why again is this bad? Um, most of the upgrade changes made to this package are about adapters that you don't use. So you have to keep upgrading the project even though it doesn't make sense to you. And upgrading a project is always dangerous. There may always be changes um, that you didn't know about uh, which will break your own project. So again, create separate packages for this and uh, make sure that, um, that you don't lie about dependencies. Or, I mean, <laughs> it, sounds a bit, it sounds a bit harsh <laughs> for me to say lie, but um, this is a way that you can use uh, the package definition file for PHP. It's a composer file. And instead of saying, I require these packages for those particular adapters, um, this package says, I suggest you install uh, several other packages uh, in case you want to use the, drop the, the, the Dropbox adapter, for, for instance. Um, and this is totally not true. I mean, the code in the package cannot be executed without um, these dependencies. So these are not, not really suggested dependencies or optional ones. Um, they are actual required dependencies. And, and if you think about this, there is maybe no such thing as an optional, optional dependency. It, if you need it, then you really need it. If you don't need it, then you don't. So there's nothing in between. Um, so in a way, this, 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 this uh, hides the true dependency graph from, from sight. Um, the funny thing is that I talked to, to the author of the library and uh, he said, <laughs> I agree with you and 100%. Um, by the way, it's a beautiful name, Leszek Brabuski. That's just very nice. Um, but he said, um, yeah, we should have uh, each adapter in a separate package and each package should have its own maintainer. That would be great as well since um, several people or one person cannot know everything about all these different file systems. So it's just really great to have separate maintainers for those um, adapters and that will make sure that, that, that it, it has the best of the best maintainers that are out there. Uh, still, <laughs> as, he can, as he says, currently this can be difficult to achieve and I, I agree with that too. So you have to ha uh, manage a lot of people working together. So yeah, there ha maybe has to be some, some kind of a uh, golden middle there. Next, the common closure principle. Um, as you know from your code, um, there may be lots of external uh, influences like uh, Pac-Man or uh, scissors, if you recognize that as scissors. <laughs> um, but well, your, your code is, is, is influenced by many changes. So sometimes, well, for instance, you may use um, a PHP version and then you upgrade it and um, well, that, that, that change in itself already forces you to change your own code. Um, for
which is an external influence. Also, um, if your uh, boss comes in and says, we have to change this, then yes, your code is going to change because this person asks you to do this uh, particular thing. And so whenever you maintain multiple packages, you want to make sure that um, uh, the, amount of the, the, the number of packages that you have to touch because of a required change is the smallest possible. Um, otherwise, you have to open all those packages, make all those changes, push, push new uh, versions of it, and there will just be a lot of work. So just this you have to make sure that the change is limited to uh, the smallest number of packages. And well, you can think for reasons of change, reasons for change about, um, well, for instance, the, the features changes uh, change, or uh, some kind of rule about the business changes. Maybe, um, well, I if you one day read some blog post by, by, by myself and then see, oh, uh, this shouldn't be done in this way, uh, I'm going to change this right now, then that will cause lots of changes all over the code base as well. And then you want to limit those uh, the number of changes uh, to the smallest number possible. Um, also, um, what you see uh, many times is that one package contains uh, code for all kinds of application layers, like code for the web, a template, like uh, command line code, um, model code, infrastructure, uh, all kinds of things uh, are thrown together into one package. And yeah, this gives problems as well. So it's always good to, to separate the, uh, those as well and to allow people to um, uh, not use your templates in, and but instead only use your model, for instance. That can be very useful. Um, the next uh, group of packages is about coupling. And as I already said, uh, coupling is about um, looking at the relations between several packages. So you take this orange package in the middle and you try to draw, uh, to, to draw all the dependencies uh, surrounding it. Uh, dependencies inwards and dependencies outwards. Um, keep in mind though that you cannot, um, uh, you cannot analyze or inspect the entire um, package ecosystem. That, that would be just too much work. And in fact, it's all about um, the package is actually installed in your project. So you have to always take care that those dependency directions are proper. Um, and what are proper dependency injections? Well, well, we will learn that uh, today. So first of all, um, the acyclic dependencies principle tells us that we should have no cycles in our dependency graph. Um, even though uh, maybe package managers would be able to, uh, to resolve those circular dependencies. I mean, there can be problems with that, uh, but you, you may be able to fix that by just helping it in a way to um, point out those circles yourself. Um, but yeah, uh, it, it will usually uh, bring you a lot of trouble. Um, and uh, most particularly when you're trying to upgrade packages and um, well, or at, le at least release them, uh, release new versions of them. Since if you want to re release a version one or maybe let's say a version two of your package and it needs another package, uh, version three maybe, uh, but that package needs to have version uh, four of another package, but that ver uh, version four needs version two of your package, then uh, you will end up waiting for each other, releasing the actual next major version. Um, and so there is not a real solution for that. Uh, you, you, you will never know if everything is going to work uh, once you have released all those versions, since they cannot be installed properly at the moment. So you, ha you will have to do some kind of a big bang release where every package is um, upgraded to its new ma major version. And then you just have to hope that um, it will work out. Uh, so in general, I think that, um, uh, and I'm sure many of you will agree with me that uh, uh, cyclic dependencies are dangerous uh, at, at, at variable level, at class level, um, but they are also dangerous at package level. And so, um, well, this is just a nice quote. Um, uh, somebody uh, uh, asking about um, a package manager uh, for PHP uh, wouldn't be able to, to solve uh, circular de dependencies. Well, it is able. But yeah, he says, um, well, in the end, <laughs> I chose to refactor my code uh, to remove this, uh, this particular uh, code smell. So, um, and it's very easy to remove these, these cycles as well. So um, mostly it's about uh, regrouping packages uh, to depend on itself, which is entirely safe. Uh, maybe there's another problem where you have to um, extract a new class and put it in its own package to, to invert the dependency directions. Um, that should, should not be a problem at all. Um, then uh, the last of the, or the last two of the principles are about stability. And um, it's, it's really fascinating for me to, um, uh, I mean, I, I have been using stability as a word, uh, it, it, well, when I was talking about software, but I never thought about this, what it would mean actually. And um, well, you could say that something is stable if it's resistant to change, but th this never came to mind. But it's really nice uh, to, to think about it like that. So um, you know this, that uh, um, a person is stable, 
if they aren't easily uh, affected by things that are happening in their surroundings. Um, so any external forces are not able to influence them. And the same goes for a stable building. It's not likely that, likely that, that such a building is going to collapse since it's just stable. You know? there, there are no reasons for it to change. Um, it will stand as it is. So um, the funny thing is that um, a person, well, a person and a building are somewhat different from software because uh, a package is stable when uh, it's unlikely that it's changed by external forces. And um, the thing is that stability is, not, is now not an internal quality of the package, but it's an external quality. So external or other packages are able to influence the stability of, the, of a particular package. And that's interesting to, to note, and it's also interesting to look at um, the different kinds of relations that a package can have with its surrounding packages. So first of all, um, this is a package, uh, and no other package depends on it. So it can do anything it wants. It can change uh, at any time it likes. Uh, so this should be considered an irresponsible package. It has no responsibility to stay the same over a longer period of time. <laughs> um, well, these kinds of packages are very nice since uh, as you, when you are the maintainer, you can change anything you like and, and, and nobody will even notice. So that's just great. At the same time, we can look at this kind of packages and say that it is a dependent package. So the orange one has multiple dependencies. It depends on many things. So let's call that dependent. Um, the problem with uh, dependencies is that they, as I already mentioned, are, um, are able to change your code as well. So when one of your dependencies changes, it has a new upgrade, some, some change, some backwards incompatible change probably, uh, then you are going to change because of that. Uh, and there's no way you can, you can prevent it. If you want to use the new version, you have to change your code as well. So being dependent is a bit dangerous. It, it allows you, or it, it, it makes you, um, well, a bit instable since you're likely to change because of external um, changes. And together, these two combined, um, so the orange package is completely irresponsible. It's also very dependent. Uh, this makes a very unstable package. And so <laughs> the funny thing is that the orange package, well, it, it can't really help itself, <laughs> you know? Just the, the way that it is surrounded by packages and the way that the, um, the dependency directions go make it an unstable package. Then looking at the other uh, way around, um, this is an orange package, another one, uh, and many packages are depending on it. So we could call this one a responsible package. Um, it shouldn't change all the time because then lots of other packages should have to change too. And this is a problem of course with, um, well, the, the PHP language, but also uh, framework packages. They, it's hard for them to make changes because everybody will be angry about the changes they have to make as well. So in that way, um, these, these packages tend to be very stable and not, not make any big changes at all um, because they feel responsible, and they are. Then if you look at the, the arrows down towards other packages, we can see that this package is completely independent. There are no other packages that it needs to do its work. Um, and this also means that it's not likely to change because of other packages. So. Um, when, when it would have many dependencies, it would be likely that, that it one day needed to change its own code. But now there are no dependencies, so no reasons for change, except uh, internally motivated ones. Uh, these two combined, we could say that uh, the orange package here uh, is very responsible. It's also very independent. Um, and this, these two qualities of a package uh, make it very stable. So it's not very likely that this package is going to change at all. Uh, it's just going to remain the same, uh, except, well, for the, the, the usual reasons. Uh, if you, at least, uh, sorry, <laughs> that was a shortcut. Um, I was meaning to say uh, for reasons internally uh, motivated. So there are no external changes that might, um, might make this instable. <coughs> um, the stable dependencies principle says that um, uh, uh, when you have, um, uh, fi have um, well, when you have labeled the package stable or, or instable, or somewhat instable or somewhat stable, you should draw a diagram of those packages and check if the direction of those arrows leads only to more stable packages. So depend in the direction of stability. Uh, as you can see at the top, there is an irresponsible package. There are no packages depending on it. Still, it is dependent on the green one. 
and the green is also dependent on two um, other packages and there's only one package depending on it so it's somewhere in between stable and instable at the bottom there are packages um, that are only dependent upon but never depend on anything else so those could should be considered very stable so this is this 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 arrangement of packages um, fully conforms to the, the stable dependencies principle. But then this diagram shows uh, a problem where uh, there are several irresponsible packages. Those are also dependent, uh, meaning they are instable. And then they depend on some package that is, uh, well, quite stable, somewhere in between it. Um, but then the green package depends on a package that has many other dependencies, which makes it instable. So the, the, the direction of stability is not uh, uh, downwards, but uh, it goes up towards uh, less instable packages. And yeah, this, this violates uh, the principle. Um, I'm saying up and down, which is not really relevant. You could also <laughs> throw the entire diagram upside down. Um, but the, the convention here is to draw the more stable packages at the bottom and the, higher, the, the more instable packages at the top. So that's, that's why I'm saying up and down. Also, the final. Uh, principle is about uh, abstraction and we can nicely combine the, the two so we have the stable dependencies principle if you're drawing um, a diagram of packages from from instable to stable then the dependency arrows should only point downwards um, the same goes for abstraction so as we will see in a moment um, a question for you uh, what is more likely to change is that something that is concrete or something that's abstract Concrete, yeah, the first answer is the right one. Um, uh, why is that? that it, it just is, <laughs> right? Uh, no, well, um, at least something is, is uh, concrete if it contains uh, implementation details, and it's the details that always change. Someone comes in and says, we need to, to, to uh, uh, get another number of uh, things. We uh, need to use another library or something. Um, yeah, so that, that, is, that is very concrete. Those are details, those have to be changed. The abstract things usually uh, stay the same. And this is also the entire intention of using abstract things in your code uh, uh, to, to, uh, to move away all the, the actual, the practical details from sight and to depend on something that is likely to, ch to stay the same uh, for a longer time. So yes, uh, what is more likely to change, a class or an interface? When we consider a class to be concrete, um, then the interface in a, uh, as abstract, well, then the interface is less likely to change um, and the class is likely to change. Um, so uh, the next question would be, uh, where would we put um, interfaces? In what kind of packages? Stable or instable? Stable. <laughs> all right. So yes, and that is entirely true. Uh, since those interfaces are not going to change all the time, we want them to be in packages that also are not, not going to change all the time. Uh, since if an, if an interface would be in a, in a package that changes all the time, then that would render the, the stability quite useless. So um, this is what the stable abstractions principle tells us. Uh, abstractness should increase with stability. If we draw the same diagram again and find some kind of a, a numer numeric indicator for uh, the abstractness of a package, that is to say, um, the number of interfaces versus the number of classes. That would give a nice indication of uh, it being a very um, abstract or a very concrete package. And then if we uh, draw those uh, packages again, we have to make sure that um, we only depend on things that are more abstract. Um, and yeah, so, ah, sorry. Oh, I, I, I'm missing a slide here. Um, it's, it's, it, there is a slide missing and the slide sh should show you the, the same kind of package di diagram uh, with uh, some indication of it being abstract or concrete. Well, <laughs> I think you can picture that in your mind um, or you have to because there is no concrete one. <laughs> All right, so um, we have seen the six uh, principles uh, right now. And uh, well, just as a, as a way uh, of, of quickly um, memorizing them, um, the first one was uh, reuse release equivalence principle and it says that you can only reuse code that you actually can release as a product. It makes no sense to reuse code um, that is not released in any proper way um, since that will give you a lot of trouble, um, especially, thank you, um, especially your users. Um, the next one is the common reuse principle and it said that all code in a package is reused at the same time. If you find a package with a class that, that, that can be used separately in a, in a meaningful way, then it should be split. 
The common closure principle says that a code in a package only changes for a few reasons, or, well, in the best case, uh, for just one reason. So you have to make sure that whenever you start modifying your code, you have to touch uh, the smallest number possible um, of existing packages. Acyclic dependencies tells us that there should be no cycles in the dependency graph, all right? Uh, stable dependencies only depend on more stable packages. So don't start depending on packages that have many dependencies themselves. That will make your own package instable. And stable abstractions at the same time would say that the more stable packages should also be the more abstract ones, and the more instable packages should be the more concrete ones. So the, uh, the um, concrete packages will contain lots of classes, implementation details, and then those will depend on abstract packages containing more interfaces. All right. Um, well, just one quick word of advice. You cannot use all of them at the same time. You cannot make your code uh, follow all, of, uh, all these principles. Um, but if you keep them in mind, well, I think the experience in general will be a nicer one for you as a maintainer as well uh, for the user, since you will have less problems with uh, dependencies that have troubles. Um, it will be, be easier to just pick one little package and use it just like you want it to be. And uh, it will make, in general, your entire project more stable if you uh, judge existing packages by the way they follow these, uh, these design principles. Um, little advertising, <laughs> you can buy this book uh, by me about the same subject on uh, leanpub.com. Um, I also have several uh, paper copies with me today, so if you're, if you're interested in, in this subject, um, then uh, come to me and uh, ask for them. And um, finally, uh, I would really like to have some feedback on this talk. Uh, it's on joined in, I'm not sure if you can see this. Uh, join.in slash 130457. Uh, you can find me on Twitter if you want to discuss uh, something uh, in a more digital way. And, um, well, maybe there is a couple of minutes of uh, question time left. So, anyone? All right, <laughs> just <Hi>. behind the... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, let, let me just... <laughs> let me just walk over there. <laughs> That's better. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't tell us your license was open, which I was going to ask if there were an application of this class. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't care about the specific class name. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of dependencies does that application have? So if I say uh, I want to make an application that lives in my mm -hmm. local box or whatever you were saying, yeah. what kind of dependencies do I have on my uh, on my workspace? Right, right. Um, so the, the so so yeah. Right, right. Uh, yeah, um, uh, I, I was thinking about how to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, the question is about um, uh, the adapter packages that I mentioned uh, for the file system abstraction. Uh, but in your application, you, you, you need um, only the abstract uh, uh, stuff uh, or the abstract aspects of that. Um, yeah, so in your package, you would depend on uh, an abstract package. So the, it should be the core, uh, the core package of the file system library. Um, and then the project should, should also have one or two um, concrete adapters uh, uh, dependencies. So you can you can just add the dependencies that you like uh, to use. Um, so even if the application wants to know about the implementation, so let's say that I want to know about the application, mm -hmm. maybe I have to make another application. Right. right. How do I do that? Um, so uh, again, uh, another question. Um, the project would have to know about the concrete dependencies, the, co the concrete ways in which uh, it talks to um, specific file systems. Yeah, I, I think this is no problem at all. Uh, the application is, is the most concrete thing about um, uh, your code, and it contains all the configuration um, and all the details about how to connect with, for instance, Dropbox, if you want to use that. Um, so yeah, on the application level, I would say it's no problem. Uh, if you're creating a reusable application, if that's your uh, maybe an e-commerce platform or something, um, and then you would have to provide no concrete implementations again, but you would just have to ask uh, for your users to do this. And well, the, the PHP package manager has something, uh, it, it, it's called Composer. Um, it has an option uh, to ask for packages that, that provide, uh, is this is the provide key. Um, you can ask for packages to provide an implementation for a file system, for instance. Um, so, so look this up, uh, provide <laughs> in the documentation and yeah. And package maintainers can, can uh, label their packages uh, and say that it provides a concrete implementation for a file system adapter. Yeah, so that's very useful. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah?
All right. So um, the question is, um, if I start creating a new package, then um, it will be very hard to follow all these advices, all, the, all these principles. Um, which one is the most important, or well, uh, how would you deal with that? Um, I think common reuse is a very one, the common reuse principle. Uh, I, I think this is the most important one because it, it tells you uh, to not put all uh, kinds of different things in one package. Um, and yeah, so in the end, the most practical advice I would give is to start very small. Create one very small package with just a few classes um, uh, which offers one solution for something. And then, uh, of course, make it extensible so other people can create new adapters for it. But yeah, you will have some, some experience with uh, maintaining that package. And it, 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 I think it should work out. To, for me, it always has worked out uh, to, to pick just one small feature, not trying to create one big application or, um, uh, or offer solutions for everybody. That's too hard. <laughs> right, thanks. Okay, one. Ah, yeah, um, the question is, uh, how do you handle uh, package visibility? So uh, when, you're, when you're working, or when you're, you're trying to uh, provide backwards compatibility, it's a real problem that everything in PHP is, is uh, out in the open. So uh, as soon as your package contains one class, it might be possible that someone is using it, and uh, even though you think it's private to the package, yeah, it, uh, how do you go about changing that code? Um, true, uh, and uh, this is why it would be really great to have package vis visibility uh, um, uh, sort of indicators or scopes uh, for PHP itself. Uh, when this is not going to happen uh, for now, uh, I would say um, you have to maybe document this something uh, somewhere. Um, you should also use, or you can use annotations for classes saying um, that this is one that belongs to the official API. So you say uh, at API, this is, a, this is a bit of a convention right now. Uh, to mark classes uh, and, and methods uh, to be, uh, well, supported by you in your backwards compatibility promise uh, in a way. So um, there, there are no real uh, good ways to do this, but there are conventional ways to um, accomplish the same thing. All right. Uh, so one, I think one last question. Or? Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, there, there, there are these metrics. Um, Robert Martin mentions them as well. They are about uh, the number of ingoing and outgoing connections and, well, just, just calculating the ratio for that. Um, it, it's actually that simple. So you, you just count um, the number of classes, uh, class dependencies going inwards uh, and those going out. Divide those and then, then sh that should be the instability. Um, no, it, it, it hops from package to package. So um, if you, uh, it doesn't take actually um, the instability of other packages into consideration. It's just one number which is which just applies to one package, and then you can draw the entire diagram, and then it, w it will show uh, whether or not you have applied the principle. Yeah. Um, there is currently uh, so th there is project project uh, p depend which allows you to uh, analyze uh, classes uh, in more or less this the same way with fan outs and fan ins. Um, but it, it doesn't work for um, uh, actual composer packages. So it, it only takes uh, either namespaces or, I'm not sure, uh, the add package annotation into consideration. It would be really great to have a change in that package, pdepend, so that you can just analyze your entire project for these kinds of, well, I mean, uh, if you're doing it by hand, it would be much too work, uh, too much work. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, thank you, and um, well, have a nice day. <laughs> thank you too.